Hello, uh, welcome back. Uh, we're in part three, week one, uh, Towers of Doskval. Um, I'm getting better at those. Uh, so we left off uh, at the the um, the end of last part uh, with um, both Sav and uh, Jax having done their first downtime activity, uh, and so Hook. <laughs> well, I you kind, I kind of did your first downtime activity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Hook. What what does Hook get up to uh, post fight? So um, I think kind of yeah, kind of two things. Um, I'd like to acquire some some thugs to ensure the laboratory isn't like wrecked while we're not looking. Cool. Um, and I'd also like to go about the reducing heat stuff, um, but I'd go a bit different way than. Um, Jax was going for. Sure. So which one are you doing first? Um, I think the heat one. With the, the way I'm thinking about it, uh, I think it would make sense after that to recruit some... Uh, okay. uh, actually, you know what? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recruit the, the core. Okay. So it's an acquire an asset, is it? Yeah. This is how this works. Cool. So it's temporary. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's either uh, a gang or an expat, so I, I think it's going to be a gang uh, to guard your lair, and they'll stick around until like after the first serious battle, or until we goes by and lose interest. Cool is the example they say. So, I actually have a question about that. Um, are these th these are guards? Are they, or are these the people that you're eventually going to get like working the corners? Um, I think I'd like to like make them progress to. Doing the corners and stuff. Okay, so but, you know, is... I, I'm just trying to to slowly expand our influence and like get the tower's name out there. Yeah. So th this is your trial period. Like you're getting them in. They're doing your like. Yeah. <laughs> they're doing their uh, their probation work, and then you're gonna get them on the corners. Basically. Cool. So um, we need product before I can put them on the corners true, yeah. anyway. Cool. So um, to acquire the asset, you roll your crew tier. Uh, the result indicates the quality of the asset you get using the cruise oh, no. tier as a base. Ouch. Um, yeah, 2d6, keep the lowest. Yeah. We are in Dunswell, so... That makes sense. Uh, so shall I roll that right now? Uh, yeah, I think so. No bonus die. Okay, so, so something worth pointing out is that you can spend coin to raise the result of this roll beyond critical. So, um, you with any downtime activity, you can spend um, coin, I think. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, actually, We only have three coin. Th this is a good point. Okay, so for any downtime activity, take plus one dice to the roll if a friend or contact helps you. Um, after the roll, you may spend coin after the... Uh, yeah, you may spend coin to improve the result level. Uh, increase the result level by one for each coin spent. So yeah, like y y you roll your cruise tier. Um, it, 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 are you bringing anybody with you? Is there anybody that you think could help you with this? Um, no. no, I mean, I didn't think so. like as, as a kind of suggestion, uh, you could um, have La Rose, uh, like kind of you know, like people who have been recently found gangless, or like you know, right. you could just. You could just get LaRose to empty one of the cells, right? And just yeah, kick them yeah, that, out. that works actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we need we need to pay off the the gang boss, and we need to pay something off maybe the blue coat thing. So I I think I'm gonna might use a coin here so we can acquire a better gang. Okay, well maybe make make the, the roll first because you might you might roll a six in which case right. Wow, that's pretty good. I'd, cool. I'd probably just roll with that, honestly. <laughs> well, what's the difference? Oh, wait, you, no, you should have had an extra dice on there, remember? No, no, no. It should have just been one yeah, dice. Yeah, it should have been cause... one dice, yeah. Uh, so but it it, it's a five one. anyway, so... Yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry. That's all right, no worries. Uh, so, with a, with a five, um, you get uh, the tier, like your tier gang, so it's a tier zero gang. Uh, you can spend a coin and push them up to tier one. Uh, if you want. 
remind me what it does. Sorry, you kind of like Kyle a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was trying to flip my pages <laughs> while holding my push to talk and didn't work. Uh, remind me what a uh, difference is between the two mechanically. I think it's just to do with how effective they are. Um, I think it's like a. I could be wrong, but I think it's like a um, uh, like a kind of like a position setting thing. Mm. But let me let me double check because I think that's probably important to know. Yeah, it's the, the tug quality. Well, the, the gang's quality, I think. Yeah. So it it gives them the number of dives based on your quality, I think. Uh, yeah. If you have a tier one and have a gang of elite thugs, which gives them plus one dice, then you would roll two dice to try and kill a target. So the, the tier de uh, determines the... Uh, like how many dice they roll. Okay. Yeah. But I, I think in this case, I, I don't envision us fighting much right now. Uh, so I think it's more like a... Um, not power play, but the power show off. Like he's just showing off mm -hmm. that, like he's got strings and he knows people. And look at look at them; they already got people working for them, and they they probably been here a few days, hours. hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. So I I have some questions then, um, because mm -hmm. I think this is uh this is, we it's the first time we've seen Larose. Larose is your blue coat's contact. Um, yeah. So is he is he somebody that used to roll with the towers like family like back in the day, or is he like a new addition that the um, Sav has put together? I think it depends on Sav a bit. There. I mean, I'm <clears throat> I'm happy for it to go either way. Like I can either have introduced you to him, or else you would obviously know him probably better than I do if he used to roll with us. Mm -hmm. So. I guess well, how comfortable do you want to be with him? Since I since I'm the one doing the recruiting for him, uh, can we make him one of the uh, the guy we used before all going to prison? Sure. And I just show up on his doorstep. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's cool with me. So I I think in that case maybe LaRose is like a distant Towers cousin. Um like, like the, there has to be a reason I think that he he's like kind of following the old ways, so to speak. Um, right, uh, and so yeah, like he he's like a second or third cousin to the Towers family. Like obviously, his name has got lost High along rise. the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so yeah, like we we see, um, I I think like we we get like a shot through the like prison bars of a cell in some like you know police station somewhere, um, and there's like a bunch of like a motley group of like completely like like tattered looking wastrels. Um, there's like a guy with one eye and like another guy who's got like, um, like only one arm, like, and just like a kind of like folded over sleeve. Um, there's like another guy that's got like no teeth. Um, and, and like LaRose, we, we see like you and LaRose step into, into shot and LaRose is this like, he's obviously wearing the blue coat, uh, but he's very like thick, like broad shouldered, like thick kind of like meaty arms, um, like not like ripped, but like kind of like slightly pudgy, but there's like muscle under there. Uh, and he's like smoking a, a rolled up cigarette that he like takes a final drag on and just like you know crushes into the the wall of the the jail cell and just he, like he looks at you and says, "Well, they're not much, but it's the best you could get." Yeah, I think there's this like moment in uh, Basnif's face where he's just like, "How low we've fallen, <laughs> <laughs> right?" He just looks at them and he like there's an expression of like disgust and disappointment mixed in there and then you just like all right thanks rose you lot come around got some job for you yeah and, and like a couple of them kind of like cl clamber up and and larose like pulls the like the bars back you know there's a kind of like sliding jail door um and it kind of you hear that like kind of mechanical rattle as it's pulled back uh, and a couple of, yeah, a couple of them like, kind of get up off the, the kind of like wooden bench in the back of the room uh, and kind of like stagger forward. Um, 
and like coming like out of the shadows there's like one guy who i think like like looks a cut above the rest like he's wearing like a shirt and like a shirt that like maybe sav would even wear like uh sorry hook would wear um like it's kind of like a nice car it's like reasonably modern um it, there's like kind of there's like a, a little bit of threadbare here and there but he, he you know his hair is nicely done and combed um and he he kind of like steps forward like looks at you for a moment and just vomits on the floor um and larose looks at you and says uh I brought him in for drunk and disorderly, but I think you'll do. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, Hook looks him up and down and says, Yeah, <laughs> can be worse than any of the others. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but I, I think Hook, like, just looks at them all and says, Listen up, you work for me and my brothers for a few weeks, and then you're free to go. No more trouble with blue coats you slack off don't do your job or disappoint me i just talk with my friends over here and you're back in the cell so what is it yeah i think there's a kind of like moment where they like look at each other all right we'll work for you i like to hear that and i think Hood just like turns around and stop walking um, dragging like LaRose with him, uh, you know, whispering and inquiring about him since he's uh, his family, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah, the, the the pair of you like walk off, leaving a very bef like befuddled, confused set of criminals in your wake, and they like slowly like, look around, like waiting for like the other shoe to drop, and then like cautiously emerge out of the cell. Um. So Sav, uh, you were going to follow up on your, your long-term project? Was that how that was going to play out? Yeah, that's the plan. I think uh, the main thing that he needs to do is get going here. Okay. So what form does this take? Like, how you, You've done the kind of like laying out and, and the working out. So like, how does it proceed from here? I think uh, the thing that we had talked about next, I, I guess actually there are it could go in one of two directions. Either one, I try to, uh, like, all right, spend time acquiring the things and then time to adjust them afterwards, or we hand wave that acquisition part. I, I don't know how it is that you want to go about that exactly, but it seems like probably I, I need to get the things. So convince somebody to, you know, sell me or give me access to or whatever mm -hmm. so that's probably sway um yeah. the other one would be the actual setup that'd be anchor so yeah so i i feel like you've kind of done like the planning bit you need to acquire some materials before you can really go any further with it so i think yeah consult or sway depending on how like how you kind of fictionally position yourself and whether there's any difference for you or not yeah i, I think um i think that it's probably sway for Aldo because I think outside of family and like a handful, uh, maybe just the one. And really, I'm not certain that Jewel is particularly a friend so much as he is just someone that uh, gets sad what he needs and is not unpleasant to be around. But I think he's probably very focused on uh, his work. In a happier world, he would probably be an academic, but as it is, He's a, uh, well, a drug Criminal. manufacturer. <laughs> yeah. Scum, scumbag. Yeah. Scumbag kind of fuckface. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think um, he's going to be doing a lot of, you know, manipulation as opposed to actually friendly cool. talking. So, so where do you go to get this stuff? So I think that... Uh, like Leviathan blood only has so many uses, right? Uh, most of them are, you know, there are a few of them that are sort of the accepted legal uses. And then everybody else that gets it is probably trying to use it to make something or else, you know, smuggling it in super large quantities. And if anybody would know where you would go to get the equipment to properly handle 
with that than blood if you're trying to make something out of it. It seems like it would be the sort of person that would deal with that than blood. So probably going to go see Jewel and see if he can point me towards uh, somewhere that I can collect some stuff. Cool. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you make your, your roll. Um, and then I think like there's a there's a person that Jewel is going to introduce you to, who who we might become more acquainted to as this as this series goes on. So, sure. Let's let's see how it goes for you first. So Jewel is helping you, so you get the extra die for that. Excellent. I needed it. <laughs> cool. Um, and then you can spend coin on top of that as well if you think that you want to like push this up like a, a ranking um it's going to take an extra role anyway I, is this going to go i mean i'm adding ticks to my laboratory clock you are, is that yeah. What it is? yeah it'll take me an extra one anyway i'll save the coin okay cool so yeah i mean i, I think we see um you <laughs> and jewel um do you want to tell, do you want to tell me what jewel is like um like who they are and, and how, like what the kind of relationship between the two of you is yeah so i think that uh jewel is sort of a, I think I might have referred to Jewel as both male and female at this point, but I originally had thought of her as a woman. So I suppose that I'm gonna go back to that at this point. I think that she's uh, kind of a small woman, like who look, is shifty, I suppose, but look shifty and sort of plays that up, like in such a way that, you know, it, blue coats hauled her in or something that she looks more like a you know small time peddler or somebody that they just snatched off the streets you know from an alleyway or something than she does somebody that has a sort of if not incredibly large then at least relatively serious business smuggling this stuff but i think uh you know that's sort of belied by the way that she carries herself when she's not playing up her shiftiness and you know she's uh i think pretty well maybe she did a short stint at the academy too maybe even we met each other there mm -hmm. at some point because i feel like she's probably relatively educated to be you know handling all of this stuff and kind of running her own little criminal enterprise here so yeah i, I think um she's probably kind of sarcastic and quick-witted and uh not at all afraid to make fun of herself or anybody else that she's dealing with so. mm -hmm. cool so yeah i mean i think we see um the pair of you walking down a kind of like narrow misty street um it's probably like late at night and and that doesn't make a huge amount of difference other than the fact that there is actually no sun in the sky at the moment like even the kind of like fractured like clouded over sky, uh, sun um mm -hmm. the streets as always are kind of like sparsely illuminated particularly um, up by the the docks, which is where you are now, um, and and you're like a couple of streets back from the the actual dock front. Um, like there's there's kind of like you know clustered kind of houses and like small businesses and and that kind of thing around, uh, but you're like in an alley between some at the moment, and you're approaching a kind of like courtyard. There's like a, a tall wall, like maybe like seven feet tall around a kind of like courtyard, which a couple of different um, like buildings like back onto kind of like null space um and yeah she's walking beside you she's wearing a kind of like um like pale pink you think cardigan like knitted cardigan like over her shoulders but it's like so dirty and like kind of threadbare that it's like hard to tell what color it originally was like it might have been white and now it's just covered in blood and washed out badly <laughs> but um right. so yeah she, she's walking beside you and she's 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 telling you about this person she's taking you to see um who she's mm -hmm. said is granville um, McGrath, um, and he is um, a person who specializes in the refinement of, of Leviathan blood. But uh, and as she says to you, like entirely, entirely off off the radar, um, he's a right. clandestine right. man. <laughs> it's it's a new uh, invention <laughs> that the Spark Rights have come up with. <laughs> But yeah, so and as she's kind of like walking down the street, she's kind of like keeping up a one-sided, I think, patter, saying like, um, "Now don't look him in the eyes uh, necessarily, and you'll see what I mean when you meet him." But yeah, don't look him in the eyes and and, and refer to him as sir, and uh, 
yeah, like uh, just just try not to just just don't talk too much. I think that's that's probably the, for the best. Yeah, it, I think uh, um, Aldo will kind of like hesitate for like half a second as she's kind of you know relaying all of that and kind of give her a, a quick look and say, right then. Not nearly as chatty as some of my brothers. That will not be too bad. Yeah, and she, and she nods and then says, "But of course, don't don't say too little either. You'll be suspicious if you have to say too little. You, you need to get on his good side, but he'll be able to help you. I promise." Well, that's what I need to hear. And so, um, she leads you like through this courtyard uh, into like um like a kind of like set of steps that lead like down into like a basement of some building. Um, they're like really narrow, very steep, um, and she's kind of like hand on the wall as she goes down. Um, like her, she's got like kind of sensible shoes on, but they've kind of got like a little bit of a heel, and so she's like kind of precariously tipping forward. And she comes up to the the door and like knocks a, a kind of like distinguished, like distinctive code on, on the door. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, and and a few kind of moments pass, and and then we hear like bolts, like several dead bolts getting like pulled back on the door. Um, and and she kind of looks at you one last time and says, "Best behavior." Uh, as the, the door kind of opens and um, a kind of figure mostly occluded by darkness kind of stands in the doorway, uh, looks out and says, uh, you've come again. You've brought a friend. I don't like this. And he kind of like steps back away from the door, like letting the pair of you in. Yeah, I think... Uh... Aldo will let uh, Jewel step in first and then kind of, you know, incline his head towards the figure that's not entirely visible and then step just inside himself. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, like you, 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 f- you walk in, in, in through the door and into like a kind of like long, dank corridor and you can hear like water dripping somewhere in the distance. And as you kind of like follow this like um, figure that's now kind of like illuminated from the front so you can just see like the silhouette of them. They're quite quite tall, um, but like willowy, like not like broad, um, and and they they kind of like walk into a room, uh, and you get like a kind of uh, a moment where they like look back, and you see half of their face kind of illuminated by like bright blue spark light, um, uh, and you see that like you know like this side of their face, um, it, their eye is like pitch black, like there's no distinction between the iris or the pupil or like the kind of like sclera of the eye. Um, just like a, a solid black orb, uh, and he gestures you on into the room, and you walk into a, a, a like what's clearly a laboratory. Um, there's what like, like a, a kind of like Tesla coil looking thing in the corner, like sparking blue lightning. Um, there's like mm. a bunch of like what like it's obvious to you are like you know big vats of Leviathan blood, um, kind of like softly bubbling in one corner in glass. Um, and in the center this guy's of the room, clearly on the up and up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and in the center of the room, there's like a big kind of like metal gurney, um, which this guy like walks over to and very nimbly like sits up on. Um, and it's tall enough that his like legs kind of like swing underneath it, um, like not touching the ground. And he's kind of like a little bit like a kid, like swinging his legs back and forth. Um, but like Jewel steps up to speak to with him, and he just puts a finger out and you see that there's like kind of like wicked claws on his fingertips um like where his fingernails are but they're like sharp and kind of hooked he just mm-hmm. holds up a hand and then looks at you and says uh why have you come yeah it, i think that like not long enough that it could be construed as ignoring him but long enough that you know presumably all those being watched that it would show his appreciation. He's going to kind of like glance around at everything that's arrayed in here uh, and look back up at the guy. Uh, look, I think kind of remembering Jules advice at the last second, looking just under his eyes, like maybe at his nose or something. Let's say, well, not so ambitious as to hope to have a police uh, as nice as this for a little while, but uh, thinking about getting into the business of finding a fuck with Ivan for a little bit. And uh, Jewel said that 
you would burst into town. Yeah, and, and McGrath nods and says, uh, well, she lied. Spark rides are better. They have more money, more resources. And the best you're going to find out of that tower. And he, uh, he kind of, like, hops down off the bench. He's, he's, like, he's very respectably dressed for, like, um, like, al almost, like, nobly dressed. Like, he's wearing, like, a very, like, clean, like, pressed, like, linen-ish shirt. Like, bright white. Especially with the kind of like blue light shining across it, and, and like a waistcoat with like a you know like a chain and a, a pocket watch, um, which he's like he takes out and and like kind of considers, and then like just breaking away from the conversation, walks over and adjusts some dials somewhere, and and like a, a fresh kind of like round of spark lightning just like flashes off, and he looks back at you and says, um, "You're not setting up this endeavor in my territory, are you?" Oh no. We're uh, all the way back in Dunswap. All the way across the city from you. And he nods, seemingly pleased by that, and says, uh, mm, What's in it for me? Well, uh, I've always heard that uh, two minds working on something is better than one. If it is that you have anything that you need some help with? I've done all the time over at that academy. I didn't have a chance to finish my education. Circumstances changed, but uh, the professors always seem to think I was pretty bright. If that's not good enough, then uh, I'm happy to hear what it is that you think would be worth your time. Yeah, and he, he walks back over to you. Um, you're pretty tall, right? You're like six foot and, mm. and change. Um, yeah. So I, I think he, he's like, you know, as tall as you, maybe a little, like a hair shorter. Uh, but he kind of like walks over and, and like looks directly into your face. Like, do you, do you meet his eyes or not? Yeah, I think if he walks up and does that, then I'll, I'll raise my eyes to meet his. Yeah, and, and so you get, like, like his completely, like, inscrutable eyes, like, staring into yours. Um, uh, and then he says, uh, I didn't finish my education either. The Academy took exception to my appearance. Yeah, I, I think uh, at that, like, um, Aldo's face will sort of quirk a bit, uh, maybe in a, a sort of unreadable expression, say, make you feel me better. They took, they rather took exception to my uh, inventiveness. Yeah, and he nods and says, uh, Leviathan blood is dangerous business, not one without consequences. He, like, continues to, like, stare, like, at you with these, like, unfathomable black eyes. And he says, uh, I hope you're willing to take them. Yeah, it, I think uh, Aldo will kind of pause and give that the sort of consideration that it's due. So, I'm willing to uh, accept any consequences my work brings. I don't think it's business for fools working with the eyes and blood. Luckily, I'm not one. <laughs> yeah, and he considers that for a moment. And then, like, like, for the first time, like, an expression appears on his face, and he gets, like, a little small smirk. Um, and then, like, yeah, he, he nods again and says, uh, in that case, I like you. You remind me of me. I'll help you out and in the future. I'll ask for something in return. Yeah, I think, assuming that he's not so close that there's not enough room for me to sort of incline my head, I think Aldo will do so. Same. It is greatly appreciated. It's 
McGrath, was that what she said? Yeah, his name is um uh, is Granville McGrath. Yeah, it, it's greatly appreciated, Mr. McGrath. Yeah, and he, he like turns his head slightly and says, No, my name is Granville. My friends call me Granville. You can be on of Granville. Uh, and then, like, like this kind of, like, very intenseness is just, like, suddenly dropped, and he gets, like, a kind of excited expression on his face. Like, it, it, again, like, it doesn't kind of quite reach his eyes. Like, there's a kind of, like, very dull emotionless, like, for the top half of his face, but his face, like, his his lower face, like, cracks into, like, an enormous smile, and he says, uh, well, if you're getting uh, uh, started with Leviathan blood, you'll need... And he starts, like, going off into a spiel of stuff that, like, we don't understand, but uh, your characters do. Uh, right. And so, like, he, he kind of, like, begins leading you around the laboratory, like, almost like a kid in a candy store, like, piling you high with things to, to get working <laughs> with. Yeah, I think, like, maybe while he's, you know, gathering something up, uh, and to hand the Aldo, you know, Aldo kind of glance over his shoulder and meet eyes with jewel and mouth, thank you. Yeah, and she looks really annoyed, but, like, not in a kind of, like, she's angry with you kind of way, but, like, in a, like, how does he come the first time and make friends with this dude? <laughs> I'm the face here. You're not the face. <laughs> cool. So a, a four takes you on two, right? Yes. Does, yeah. yeah. Cool. So let's, uh, let's, let's tick you on a couple. And, yeah, um, let's... Let's move on from here. Um, so, Jax, were you were you next? Yeah, um, I was going to indulge my vice. Cool. So, you have a an interesting kind of vice. I, I would like you to talk about it for me, sure, please. Sure. Well, I have picked luxury as my vice, um, and I was kind of imagining it as like sort of a desire for, you know, like the finer things, like the, in terms of not necessarily items, but like food and drink and consumables, I guess. Um, and not necessarily to like the point of, of uh, like ecstasy so much as just like the, like enjoyment of quality, mm -hmm. I guess. Is the way I describe it. And, and so you have like a particular way that you're intending to indulge this vice, right? Yeah. So I am ex-military. Um, I think that I did not leave the military under bad terms. Um, and when I was pre-prison, uh, there was a certain club that I frequented, um, a sort of officer's club. Um, I think I earned a military commission. That's mm -hmm. why I am I had access to it. Sure. Um, so it, it, does this Dunville Street Officers Club? I Dunville Street Officers it. Club. Cool. Um, and so yeah, like the where is Dunville Street Officers Club located? It is in Night Market. Um, sort of just seedy enough that uh, like the people that clearly are trying to escape their home lives can get the stuff that they want, but not. Not so seedy as that they need to worry about junkies and muggers uh, mm -hmm. jumping them on the way there. So did you have a, a kind of idea for like what this place looks like? Or are you happy for me to, to flow this? I was thinking it's probably not particularly flashy, but uh, maybe sort of like a, a sort of brownstone or a, like a townhouse kind of thing. But mm -hmm. I don't know if that was fitting in what you what you were thinking. Yeah, definitely. I, I think like it's probably like a, a converted townhouse, right? I think there was like a point at which somebody decided that they they thought that night market was going to be the next like prime bit of real estate, and so started building these like fancy townhouses, only to find that nobody fucking wants to live in night market. They only want to go there yeah. and have a good time. Um, so now it's being converted to this this officers club, and I think um, it's got that like I don't know if you if you're familiar with like London architecture, but like that kind of thing where there's like a, a set of stairs that goes down. To like a servant's entrance, but then like a kind of like flight of stairs that goes up to the front door as well, uh, like off the street. Yeah. Um, I think you see me like standing across the street, sort of like looking 
and may, I think I've probably been standing there a little while to make sure that the person I'm trying to meet there is there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now I'm just trying to decide which entrance I should use. Cool. So yeah, like, w which do you pick in the end? Like, are you? I think when you see me, when I came out of prison, I had this like really unkempt beard, but now it's still long, but it's trimmed. Um, I don't know that I can afford anything to put in it, but like, it's it's looking cleaner, brushed out a little bit. Um, my hair is now washed and like tucked back into sort of a a, a knot back there, um, a man bun, if you will. Um, and uh yeah i'm just i think i uh, i like looked out at my clothes which are they're not the prison clothes anymore but they're not particularly nice mm. and i and i um like straighten it out like fold out some or like press out some creases and then sigh and go to the servant's entrance cool so i mean i think you you have to knock um like the, the, there's a, a there's a, a kind of like um footman standing at the top of the like the the, the customer's entrance uh, and he kind of watches you go down and you, obviously you knock at the door and, you know, the, the ball is slid back and the door opens a crack and uh, a kind of face appears like a, a servant or, you know, like some sort of like staff of the, the club. And they, they, they peer out and they say, uh, can I help you? Yeah, there's a there's a Dr. Henry Rollins. That's what a, is Satu's actual name. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Dr. Henry Rollins. Uh, it's a member here. Tell him uh, you could deliver a message to him. Um, tell him Ajax is calling after him. And I'm like sort of not meeting his eyes. Like just enough that like I have to, but more I'm just like they're chewing, chewing my bottom lip and uh, looking down. Yeah, and he, he, he kind of uh, he, he kind of like clears his throat very slightly. And, and like when you do like look it up at him, he's kind of got like a white gloved hand just like between the, the door jam and the door. Um, so he's not he's not delivering that message to me? He, he's like, give me some money. <laughs> I mean, it's not, of... it's not a coin's worth. He's just expecting something yeah, yeah. in return. I'm like grounding. I'm going to grind my teeth. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not here. I'm not at that level yet. Can I just sort of like shoot daggers at him, see if he'll just do what the fuck I want? Because yeah, I mean, he he will do it. It's just the message will be slightly different, right? <laughs> I was a member here at one point. <laughs> fuck this dude. Okay, so you're just, you're just glaring at him. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and so he he kind of he, it's his turn to like avert his eyes, and he goes, oh, "Yes, very good, sir. I'll, I'll do that at once." And he he closes the door like not slams it in your face but like, closes it in your face and like I, I i pull out a cigarette and the same the same pack that i took off that dude and light it up yeah and, and you know you you uh you, you wait for like a, a few moment like minutes um, which kind of like stretches on like a little bit longer than you were kind of anticipating uh, and then you hear like footsteps at the like the upper entrance, like um, you hear that the footman say something and and like kind of un inaudible uh, to somebody, um, and then you hear like footsteps on the steps and someone kind of like pauses like midway down the steps leading down and and you hear a voice saying, "Ajax, are you here?" Satu, thank fuck. And I sort of like flick the cigarette, which I think is mostly out at this point, and I like, go up go up the stairs to like give him a hug yeah and and, and like he, he catches himself right like he's aged like you know it's been six years since you've seen him and he looks like kind of like respectable and and kind of like he's kind of uh, like gone gray in his beard and like at his temples and it's all kind of like cut very clearly and there, there's like an instinct like there that he represses where he goes to hug you and instead like shakes your hand um yeah i stop and i take it yeah and he says my gosh, it's good to see you, Ajax. It's been a long time. Yeah, too long. Too what, long. What were you doing down at the service entrance? C come in, my boy. He, you know, gestures I, you to follow him. I sort of like pause and I like look down at what I'm wearing. Uh, I'm not. Um, yeah, and not he, he he flaps his hand at you and he says, "Don't. We'll we'll find you a jacket inside. Come in." And I like very reluctantly sort of follow in after him. 
Yeah, and as he as he walks in, um, he looks to uh, he looks to the footman and says, "Carl, this is a friend of mine. He's my guest today. Um, find him a jacket, would you?" And Carl kind of like nods, kind of gives you like a, a slightly pitying look, and like disappears off into the club somewhere. Um, and and Sawtooth like completely ignores it and just like leads you on in, uh, and I think like takes you through to like um, I I think he he's probably like. I don't, like, I'll let you decide this. Like, he's either embarrassed to be seen with you or he's, like, very, like, astutely aware that you're feeling uncomfortable and you can decide I how think, you feel on that. Um, I think he is astutely aware that I am uncomfortable. Um, okay. And, and he's, I'd like to think I have one ally in this, in this den of assholes. <laughs> So yeah, like he, I guess in that case, like you, you realize that he's picked up on the fact that you're feeling uncomfortable, but he's playing it off as though it's like of no importance, um, and he takes you through to a kind of like semi-private dining room. There's like maybe like three or four other people in here, uh, and they're kind of having what looks like business conversations. So it's not like um, like they they they're clearly uninterested in you, um, and so you kind of like arrive at the table, um, and 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 as you do, Carl kind of intercepts you and just drapes this like very nice. But clearly ill-fitting suit jacket yeah. across your shoulders. Um, is, it, is it too small or too big? Too small. Like you're way too big um, for this yeah. suit jacket. Maybe you should have given him some coins. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and yeah, Carl pulls the seats out for you and and has you seated and and brings menus and um, uh, and and Sawtooth like you know like a, a, as he's leaving, catches his sleeve and says, "Everything on my bill tonight." Uh, and Carl nods and says. Of course, sir, as as you wish. Sawtooth, I can. I can. That's not necessary. Yeah, and and, and Sawtooth like flaps his hand at you and says, "Nice, have no concern, my boy. I haven't seen you in six years. I have to treat you a little bit." Uh, I guess I am a guest here now, huh? I'm, I'm uh, behind on my dues. Yeah, he, he nods and he says, "Nice." I'm sure they'll be forgiving and and take you back, no problem. Just need to uh, uh to sign the paperwork and all that. Um, I guess I like give a small smile, but very uncomfortable. Um, I um, how things been, old friend? Yeah, he, he nods. Um, says uh, actually. It's been rather good. Uh, things have turned out rather well for me since the war. Um, I uh, I put some some money into uh, one of the Leviathan uh, hunter fleets, and uh, it's been very lucrative. Obviously, I have no involvement in the day to day running, but the money speaks and flows, and uh, life in Duskville is is good for once, at least for me. It's good to hear. And he knows. I think there's like a sort of like genuineness there. Like I'm genuinely happy that things are going well for him. Mm -hmm. Does he know that you've been in prison? Yeah. Okay. He has it like he knows. Uh, and I think there's an understanding that like he is in an echelon where he couldn't come talk to me. And mm -hmm. I know that too. So like they're like it's sort of unspoken that, you know, I, I forgive him for that. Mm hmm. Yeah, and, and so I think, like, your food arrives, um, and, and Sawtooth, like, dismisses Carl again, and it's, like, it's nice, like, it's, like, actual vegetables, and, like, some meat that is probably, like, dog. Not mushroom? No, no <laughs> mushroom. I think, I think I go with my right, I think I go to grab the fork, like, I'm just gonna start shoveling it, and there's, like, a, I, I, I'm almost there, and there's a pause, and then I, like, switch it to the right hand, pick up the knife, just sort of, like, very slowly and almost like awkwardly like i've forgotten how to do this mm -hmm. like start cutting cutting my food yeah and and you know he he is like the very measure of, like sawtooth is the very measure of um uh what was his actual name sorry i've forgotten already henry rollins i henry think rollins. is what i'm gonna call him I think um, I might have. That might actually be an actor's name. So I may have to. <laughs> it's definitely somebody's name. It's already. definitely That's someone's it. name. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like Henry is um, like you know, I don't know whether he was like this in the army, but he's like very sophisticated now. Um, like he knows all the right forks to use. Like he, 
you know, when he ordered the wine, he knew like what vintage and what brand. Um, yeah. I don't think it's he, called uh, a brand. He's... It's called a vineyard. <laughs> um, I, th- he, I mean, I think he's always been like this, um, mm-hmm. but like, it's it's the, I don't think he's ever done it in a way that makes other people feel lesser. And also, there's a time when I was able to keep up with all of that, but like it's just been so long. Yeah. At this point, that. Uh, and so yeah, like uh, as you kind of like like tuck into the food, um, he says, uh, "It's good. This um, not like that uh, that swill we used to eat in the army." Um, and there's a kind of like undertone to that, and like of like, and not like the shit that you've been eating for the last six years. But again, like he's too polite to say so. Listen, you always you always had it better than than I did even back then, Sawtooth. Uh, but I can tell you some stories now. Yeah, and you're he... sort of like slowly going about. At each bite, it's sort of like this. Like. I still feel embarrassed, but, like, tension is sort of lifting off of me. Mm-hmm. And he's good at this, right? Like, he, he's clearly now a businessman, and he's good at putting people, like, at ease. Um, yeah. Like, I think, like, Siltooth, he was originally, like, a medical professional, right? But he's made that transition. Um, and, yeah, like, so I, I think, like, over the course of, like, it, like, is this, like, lunch or is this dinner? This is dinner. This is dinner, yeah. So, like, over the course of the meal, like, he has, like, another bro- bottle of wine brought. Um, he assures you that there's a, a dessert that they make now that, you know, they've got a new chef and you'll have to try it because it's incredible. Um, and so, like, you know, he he just, like, racks up a tab, like, bringing you, it, like, you know, thing after thing. Like, clearly making a big fuss of you because you've, like, been in prison. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, where I've been... Uh... They do a pretty decent job of, uh, of pairing pairing wine and food, but uh, not a candle to you, my friend. Yeah, and he, he flushes a little bit, um, and you don't know whether it's to do with like the prison reverence or whether it's like he's actually genuinely like flustered by the compliment, uh, but he seems pleased nonetheless. Um, and I, 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 I mean, think... I think I think I'm definitely keeping that talk to a minimum, but mm-hmm. like I'm also like trying to say, I'm gonna joke about it. That's just the thing that I am going to do, but I will, I will, I will definitely keep the specifics on the down low. But mm-hmm. so I, I think as as the kind of like evening draws to a close, like he gets like alcohol, like nice alcohol brought out, um, and he he kind of like shifts, like you can f- you notice that he's like putting, like almost like playing a game of chess, like putting pieces in position throughout the night, and you're not quite sure like what he's angling towards. Uh, until like these drinks come out and he gives you like uh, like this like neat whiskey and a cigar and gets you like in one of the like the kind of armchairs by the fire um and then he uh... there's there's like a thing you're supposed to do with cigars and before you smoke them i don't know if they bring out a set of, like a strip of of like really thin wood with it but like you're supposed to toast a cigar and so throughout, like you, you light the thing on fire, and then you just sort of like bring the heat up to the cigar to like get all the moisture and to like shrink it up. And I am doing this in like a methodical manner. Like there is almost like a ritualistic element to how I am setting up this cigar and scotch that I'm about to drink. I'm taking like ten minutes to toast this thing. I am just this is about to be the thing I've looked forward to for the last six years, and there is going to be the appropriate amount of reverence put towards it right now yeah i think there's a kind of like dichotomy in that that he just treats it as like a kind of like an everyday thing right like the moment yeah. it arrives i don't think he even bothers toasting it i think he just like like you know clips it and, and starts smoking um like next like a like half of the whiskey in like one gulp um and then he finally gets around to like talking about the thing that he's like he like he he wants to talk to you about um and he says uh well I, have you given any thought to what you're going to do now i think i've given a little bit more than thought to it and he kind of frowns and he says uh you see the thing is i have um a position opening up it's only a few hours a week and only a few days a week, but it would be steady work, well-paying, 
mean, you might have to learn to write a little bit better, but cloaking isn't so bad. I, uh... I know who I am, Sawtooth. I can't put that, put that to, put my, put what I am too, too deeply into you now. That'll be bad news, I think. I appreciate what you're trying to do here. Yeah, and he... Plus, their, their, uh, their family. Yeah, and he, he frowns, um, and says, uh... Family is important, but a, a man has to learn to stand on his own as well. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and he, he kind of like tips his head as though conceding that. Um, but he says, uh, he, like, he, he, like I think, like, he, he takes a moment to, like, recoup and, and approach from a different angle. Like, he's not quite, like, done with this yet. Um, uh, and he says, um, you were a soldier once, a damn good one. You could go back to that. Prison is no place for the likes of you. I was hoping you might have learned that in the last six years. The truly awful thing, I think. And I might have learned the exact opposite. Yeah, and he lets out like a, a kind of like lung full of, of well, a mouthful of cigar smoke because you don't actually inhale uh, cigars. Yeah. Um, and like shakes his head and says, um, well, the offer will stand if you change your mind. I'm, um, I'm going to pay your club dues for the next month or so, just until you get a chance to get back on your feet. It would do you good to spend some time in proper company. And he kind of like glances at you, and for the first time, there's a, a, like a kind of like little like like the, you you've kind of like broken his composure slightly, and, and there's a kind of like slight edge to it. But he says, um, "Do you need clothes or money or?" No, I can I can handle that. You've done enough, and um, I also never apologized. I suppose it doesn't mean much and I'm not with what I'm doing, but um, I suppose I should say it nonetheless. I know I let you down, but I am sorry for that. Yeah, and he, he does that thing of like, like kind of like half shaking his head, but like also like nodding. <laughs> so it just like ends up like a little bit of an awkward movement and he just says, uh, You've nothing to apologize for me for. I'm not your father. You have one of those. Heaven knows he must be hard enough work. Well, he's yeah, he's not my, my sentence in prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not my problem anymore. But like, I, I think there's still a bit of I don't really know how much I mean that. Yeah, and I, I think he knows, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, and he, he looks at you and he says, um, the army was a chance for you to remake yourself, and you, you did while well, you weren't here. And prison was a chance for you to remake yourself. And time will tell whether you did or not. And I can't help but es not escape my notice that you're much worse when you're with your family. I don't think I say anything to that. I resent that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think like Henry like leans back in his seat, like looks like kind of stares moodily into the fire. Uh, and unless you have anything kind of like to add to that scene, I think we'll like fade out on that and go to our next break. Yeah, I guess I should actually roll my indulging. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you probably should. <laughs> uh... 
Nice. 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 Cool. Uh, that is, if I had rolled any higher, I would have overindulged. overindulged. But uh, I cleared all my stress. Nice. nice. Nicely done. Cool. So we'll take uh, our third break, come back on the final part. Um, yeah, we'll see you in a moment.